Today I am going to show you how to make a sourdough starter. But not only that, on top of that I'm going to dispel a few of the myths that are doing the rounds about how to make a sourdough starter and how difficult it is and how you need some sort of a magic touch to do it and how you need some magic ingredients and how you need to perform some weird rituals in order to make it work. What you can or cannot use while you're making it work. All sorts of nonsense is being peddled everywhere about how to make a sourdough starter. When in actual fact you only need two ingredients to do it. You need flour and water. And that's it. Nothing else. You don't need, for example, as Paul Hollywood asserts in his book, a fruit to make this work. You don't need some sort of fruit to get your starter going somehow. Everything you need is already there in the flour. You also don't need to put your jar uncovered out in the moonlight well, maybe I'm exaggerating a bit but outside in order to harvest the wild yeasts that are floating around in the environment. No, 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 no. You just need flour. But you need the right flour. You need the correct type of flour to get this thing going. You see, if you go to your supermarket and you buy your commercial, mass-produced, lovely, bleached white flour to do this, you're going to find that it's not going to work. It's not going to succeed unless you hit it very, very lucky. What you need is something a little bit less refined than that. And I would recommend something like this. A wholemeal organic rye flour. Now I'm not trying to peddle you organic for some sort of health reason. And I would say once your starter is going, once you have it up and running and it is in good shape, you don't need this anymore. You could use this for the flavor because it is nice, but you don't need it for your starter anymore. You really just need it to get your starter up and running. And why is that? Because your starter is based on a symbiotic relationship between a number of organisms that live in your mixture while your starter is sitting there and fermenting away. And they are two things, yeasts and lactobacillus. Those two organisms live in a symbiotic relationship inside your starter and by working together in this relationship they produce waste products that make it very difficult, if not impossible, for the sort of bugs that you do not want, the nasty bacteria, the things that would make it go off to take a hold in your mixture. And that's how a starter can keep going for years and years and years, as long as it's being fed on a regular basis with flour and water. Now organic rye flour, especially rye, what happens is rye grows outside in the field and it is subject to, as anything that's living outside is, to organisms that try to take advantage of the fact that the rye is sitting there growing away, the parasitic organisms such as yeasts and lactobacillus. And of course, if you're taking, a, taking an organic product like this, then you will be a little bit more sure that these organisms haven't been interfered with as much. Also, in the process of the milling of the flour, these organisms will not have been destroyed by bleaching or by overheating through mass production. So that is the reason why I recommend you use a organic flour to start with anyway. And then all you do is take the flour, put it into a receptacle of some description, just a good bunch of it, you don't have to measure it out or anything like that. Put 
There you go. That should be enough. And then your other magic ingredient, clean water. Now again, I am lucky. I live in a, a little town on the east coast of Ireland and I'm very lucky in the sense that what comes out of the tap is nice clean water that is perfectly suitable for, for what I want to do with it. Some people are not so lucky. If you've got chlorinated water coming out of your tap, maybe it would be better if you use a bottled water. Don't go for the expensive stuff. Anything that's just fairly soft, not too hard, and hasn't got chlorine in it will be perfectly fine. You don't need to keep it at a magical temperature range either. You know, if you feel comfortable in your environment, in your temperature, in your sitting room or your kitchen, whatever, then you can be pretty sure that the yeasts will be happy too. So you take your mixture, pour some water in it, and just mix it up with a spoon. Yes, this is another myth that's doing around about sourdough. Some people think that you are not allowed to use metal spoons when you mix your sourdough. That's the biggest nonsense that there is. Now, the argument, apparently, is that the sourdough is, well, sour, the lactic acid that's being produced by the bacteria, would attack the metal in the spoon. But this is stainless steel. Get real. Mix it all up until you get a nice little paste going. If you blinked, you missed it. And that's it. It's done. Your sourdough starter is ready. Well, no, it's not. This now has to, well, get going. Has to, you know, come to life at the moment. There's nothing happening in there. But this is organic flour. So there are some contaminants in there. There's some yeast in there. There are some bacterial parasites on the grain that have been milled with it that are in there. So slowly but steadily, this will start doing its thing. Now the only thing is, what do you do with this? Now, like I said, there's no need to take this outside and harvest the wild, wild yeasts from the environment. It's already in there. So all you need is to put it somewhere safely. In fact, I would say it's probably best if this didn't stay open because I don't know what's floating around in the air around here, but it's probably not what you need in there. So you don't want it in there either. That's another reason why I would recommend that you don't add stuff to this. You don't add fruit to this starter. Now, it might be very tempting because fruit, like grains, as they're growing on the trees or on the plants or whatever they're growing on, have a tendency of attracting their own parasites, their own yeasts and their own bacteria that like to live on the skin of the fruit. However, and this is the problem, the, f the yeast that grows on the fruit are the yeasts that are adapted to living on the skin of those fruits. They will, of course, when given a lovely source of food like this, start multiplying and start doing their thing, but they're not the best yeast to use in a sourdough starter. So you can get, you can start noticing that your starter is not as vigorous as you would like it to be, for example. And that is one of the reasons you started with the wrong zoo in there to start with. This is all you need. So like I said, you don't want any nasties to get in there. So I would recommend you cover it. And what I would do is just take a bit of paper or whatever, or a little towel or something, wet it, make it a little bit damp, and just stick it on top like so to cover it up. That's it. That's all you need. Take a little string, tie it so it stays on it very nicely.
and it's ready to go. There you go now. This is now ready to just be put aside and to be allowed to do its thing. Now why am I putting this on top of it? Now you could, for example, have a jar with a lid that closes it hermetically. However, we're not making wine. We're not producing alcohol here. And this would allow, while it keeps it covered and it keeps any sort of contaminants out there, the air can permeate through it and it will allow oxygen in there and the yeast will be happier when there is oxygen there. It doesn't necessarily need it, but with oxygen present it won't be producing alcohol, it won't be producing a hooch up there. Look it up. Something. It's not necessarily wrong, but you don't really need it either. You don't want it in your starter. So with this, you'll keep it aerated, keep it oxygenated, and it reproduces using a pathway that is more suitable for bread making. Let's put it that way. So it's simple as this. This can now be put away, and let's see what happens with it. I'll get back to you about that. I'll show you what this will look like tomorrow, in two days, or in a week's time. And you will see that this will have come to life.